So, I've been doing a lot of work with men and pornography issues and helping them sort through it. We've got some support groups running, and some of the illustrations I use, uh, some have asked that I sort of compile them into one message, and I'm going to try and do that now. We'll see how it goes and how it works. But the first one is this, and I first saw this on yourbrainonporn.com, and it's this illustration. Essentially what's happening when you have an issue with porn, or most addictions actually, but we're relating this directly to porn, is that you have um, pathways in your brain, okay, that start to connect. Well, life and regular life is lived down here, say for example, at point A. And we want to get up here to point B. This is where you feel satisfied. This is where you feel a sense of accomplishment, where, where dopamine is released in your brain and your whole body and sense of, of well-being kind of comes from there because you've done something that's worthwhile. It is worth noting. You, there's a product at the end. And you've worked for something and you've gotten there. Well, the illustration that's on your brain on porn is this. That process is kind of like this cornfield. Okay? So here's this cornfield. And so if I want to feel a sense of accomplishment, I have to go to work, and I have to work for a full day, okay? So that takes time and effort. So I go around, and, and then I get to here, and I feel, I feel better. I feel accomplished. I feel like something good has happened. I feel a sense of well-being, right? Or maybe in my relationship, there's arguments, there's issues, whatever, with my wife. To get past that and to feel satisfied happy and content in the relationship, I have to work out the conflict. Got to deal with it and got to go a long way around and whatever that takes. Maybe for some, it's even counseling. I've got to get stuff ironed out. For others, it's just a matter of, you know, I'll make sure that I'm communicating differently and I'm trying harder, whatever. It's, it's about apologizing and forgiving, whatever the case. It's the long way around, right? Now, when it comes to porn and porn addiction, and again, other addictions as well, but in this case, porn, what we've done is we said, forget it. I don't want to take the long route. That's too much work, so we're going to go right across this field. Okay? Now, at first, that's a hard thing to do, because if you've ever been to a cornfield, you see it. You try and cut through the thing. You get cuts all over your arms. It's not working very well, right? It hurts. It's hard. and It, it, it brushes, but there's a thrill to it because it's a shortcut and you're going to beat whoever else around or whatever. And so this path across the cornfield at first maybe rubs against your conscience. You don't like it. It's not okay. You know there's some moral issue with it. But you go back because there's some kind of thrill to the I'm not supposed to do this or, or whatever. And so this path gets deeper and thicker. Now, just like if you've ever been in a corn maze, you can't really even tell if that path is supposed to be there or not. It looks like the right way to go. Okay? And it's easier. You don't have to deal with relational issues. You don't have to go through a full day of work to feel satisfied, accomplished, feel better. At least for a moment. Because the dopamine and, and with porn, usually there's masturbation involved. So there's that release as well, right? So you've got uh, this, these hormones that make you feel better, make you satisfied, make you feel a false sense absolutely of accomplishment but it still releases that same hormone in the brain so you've usurped the system you've jumped ship and you're doing it your own way it's not the real way but you get so used to it you don't even remember how to go about it the right way anymore it becomes your go-to becomes your coping mechanism it becomes I want to feel better and this is how I'm gonna do it that's what happens there And when it comes to our relationship with God and Jesus we don't go to him and ask him to help us with these things. If we have issues or something's going wrong, we don't want to go and get help or deal with it properly. And so we're jumping the system and making it more and more difficult for us to feel that real sense of having worked through it, of having a result of a healthier relationship or a more productive day at work. Now, how this translates, if you start here, is now I have this other illustration that's come to me as a result of working with some of these guys, and, and it really seems to resonate well. It's this, okay? So from here, we actually put up fences. And if I want a fence to stop me from, say, if my issue is with porn, 
Uh, maybe it's internet, so we put blockers on the phone. Or maybe it's with drugs or whatever, so you flush them down the toilet. And there's no longer readily available access. And so you need filters and things if you're dealing with less than pornography. And, and you make it so that you can't get on this shortcut anymore. So you're forced to do it the right way. Now, this goes deeper, and there's all sorts of ways to hop over the fence. You can always find a way around filters and things. But the point is... We have to start doing it the right way again. Get our brains and pathways in our brain going the right way because this is actually a literal pathway in our brain. It actually makes electronic easy passage with neutrons and neurons and stuff in the brain. And so we need to retrain our brain to let this one die off, just like on a cornfield for the corn to come back. Now, on a spiritual level, I actually relate it to this. I believe that God has given each of us this plot of land that we call life. This plot that, that he's even the foundation of right now because we know who he is and we know he's created us and many of us is, have, have decided to live our lives for him in devotion to Jesus. So we recognize that this is the land that he's given us, this plot, this life, this life right here is what he's given us. And this foundation is poured. But when we get caught up in this stuff, we forget to build the house. We lose track. It's too much work. That wall is going to be so much work to put up. Whatever it might be. If you've ever built houses, you know how much elements, or even looked at your house. What's inside your walls? The plumbing, the electrical, the, the framing, the drywall, the mud, the tape, the paint, the roof, the shingles, you name it. And the siding even. There's stuff layer after layer of phases to building a house. We get overwhelmed at these elements or we lose sight of God and say, hey God, I'm tired of working on that. I'm going to take my own shortcut. So most of the guys that I'm working with, it's like this. They've got this plot. And there's tons of great potential. But they're tired or they lose sight of God and they forget how to trust Him. And so what they've done now is they've embraced this false sense of accomplishment, and they're essentially living in a cardboard box on this concrete slab, is what I've seen. Now, when you're in this cardboard box, you're like, okay, I got my foundation, I'm good, I know Jesus. But what happens is, when you see a homeless person, for example, sleeping on a park bench or whatever they might be sleeping on, they're exposed. They're easily accessible by anybody. So if we're sleeping in a cardboard box on this foundation, the prostitutes come by and they entice us, which is what pornography is. Or the different forms, maybe drug dealers come and offer you things, alternatives to doing it the right way. You'll feel better if you take this, right? And so we're living this life where we're not focusing or allowing God to help us build this house, this, this structure of life that he has provided for us on this plot of land that's supposed to be beautiful and well-made. So what we do with guys... And we tell people, is that fence, that same fence sort of that we talked about with the cornfield, we put, we, we had a rent a fence. You've seen those probably on different construction sites, rent a fences surrounding properties, and we say, okay, now this rent a fence is going to protect the building supplies, the foundation, the tools, if we've left any behind, whatever. We can't, we're not going to worry about that stuff. Maybe you're still sleeping in a cardboard box because your house isn't quite done yet, right? But it's okay because now, they can't get past the fence to harass you. You can still see them. It's only a chain link fence, but you're, you're guarded. And so that's what we're talking about when we say filters or, or getting rid of devices, cutting off uh, yourself from whatever it is that's accessing this stuff that you shouldn't be accessing. Sometimes it's phones, sometimes it's TVs, sometimes it's the Internet as a whole. Whatever it might be, we need to cut off access and guard ourselves with it so that we can start to build this house. And as we progress, and as we work on this house, God's helping us frame it and build it. We have a front door on it. We've got a roof on it now, right? Now, that fence can progressively come down. And we build, say, our own white picket fence, whatever kind of fence you like. And now, there's only one way, one access point for temptation to come at us. And it's from that path up to the front door. So they come and they knock on our door. We look through the people. We see who it is. We tell them, no, thank you. We open the door. We say, no, thank you. Get away. Or we can invite them in. Sometimes we do. And that's when we fall into temptation. Maybe we don't recognize it because it's a new temptation. Whatever. 
The point is that we are in this place where we have to work to avoid these things right now. Where we're, we're just, we're actually in this cargo box as if we're fighting off these prostitutes with butter knives. Fighting off this temptation with butter knives. You're not going to make any progress if you don't put that fence up, are you? They're coming in at you, and all you have is this butter knife to, to guard. Well, how are you going to build a house and frame up walls if you're fighting off temptation like that? You can't do it. You're spending all of your energy and time with that butter knife. And that's what I believe most of us have done, trying desperately to do this alone. We're not designed to do that. We need to invite God into this and, and, and ask him to help. We need to get a community around us that's going to help put that fence up and be that fence for us. But not just that. You see, here's the thing. The beauty of community is that there's we're, we're in a neighborhood. And in this neighborhood, there's other houses. And other people live in these houses. And they're going to come and help us build our house. They're going to see when prostitutes and, and drug uh, dealers and, and different temptations try and sneak in. And they're going to call us and say, hey, yell down from their window or from their own property or other side of the fence and say, hey, look out, they're coming. And they'll help keep us on guard. And they'll even come over and help frame. They'll build the house. They'll put the, the siding on. They'll help us put the roof on. Because we're not alone, but we need to embrace that community to get there. And sometimes we need things. Part of our fence needs to be recovery groups and AA groups or sex anonymous groups or whatever it is that we need to make sure that we're we're solid that fence is secure that we've had time to build that house on our land so that we're guarded and protected and safe that we're experiencing more and more of Jesus and God is in us and with us and we're never alone so that's the the incredible nature of what God's provided for us is he calls us to live in community and bear, bear each other's burdens right to be there for each other. And that's who we can be. Stop living in that cardboard box and come join us in your freedom. Help, we'll, we'll help you put that rent defense up, tell you exactly where to find it, who to call to get it, and we'll even install it for you, whatever it takes, so that you're not alone. And then we'll get to build in that house. So you can live in that house with God in peace and you can be who you've been called to be. Live that life you've been called to live. That's the, the offer that God has for you. So I pray that, that this message and these images will have worked in your heart and soul, that you can relate and resonate with them, and, and that you can take them with you as you begin to process what kind of help you need and how this might apply to your world. Ask yourself and ask God, what kind of house, what kind of property has he given you for your life? And are you using it to the fullest that he intended? Or are you stuck in that cardboard box, fighting off temptation with a butter knife? Go in peace and know that there's something better for you out there.